When it rains in Mumbai, it pours. With global warming, India's financial capital on the Arabian Sea coast is experiencing not only extreme rainfall, but other climate risks too. The sixth assessment report of the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change says that by 2050, the Arabian Sea will rise by 0.17 meter if global emissions continue at current levels. This will mean that Mumbai will experience prolonged periods of flooding. When it comes to flooding, most media reports focus on the Miti River in the heart of the city and how it breaches its banks. But in this investigation, we look at the more neglected Tahisa River that floods the city's northernmost suburbs almost every monsoon. We ask, how have climate change and urbanization made communities living along this river vulnerable? And how could they become more climate resilient in this threatened coastal city? The Dahisar River originates inside the Sanjay Gandhi National Park and travels 12 kilometers before it meets Manori Creek and flows into the sea. We met with communities living near the river and spoke to them about their experiences of flooding. This is what they told us. साल में दो तीन बार ऐसा आता है जोर से इतना पानी आता है तो ये जो ब्रिज है इसको टकरा के सीधा अंदर घुस जाता है कॉलोनी में लकी दी देट डे वॉज द वर्किंग डे और दोपहर में पानी आया था मैक्सिमम व्हीकल्स बाहर चले गए थे और जो हमारा वाटर पंप सेट होता है वो पंप सेट वो सारे खराब हो गए लिफ्ट के अंदर पानी चला गया लिफ्ट की मेंटेनेंस आ गई इलेक्ट्रिसिटी बंद हो गई थी मोनिटरी मोटली नुकसान होता है उसका कैलकुलेशन होता है लेकिन बाकी जो मेंटली आदमी डिस्टर्ब हो रहता है वो सबसे बड़ा है ये है ढाई घंटे के बारिश में कम से कम सात फुट पानी आ गया पंद्रह बीस लाख रुपये एक शॉप में नुकसान हो जाता है सबका करीब करीब इंश्योरेंस क्लेम किया मैंने एक दो टाइम मैंने इंश्योरेंस लिया था कुछ ना कुछ कंपनी हर साल क्लेम आते हैं तो और सब लो लाइन एरिया करके हमने वो आगे क्लेम नहीं आता और प्रीमियम डबल ट्रिपल लेती है या लो लाइन में करके हमको आगे का क्लेम नहीं देती है 2005 में क्या हुआ था यहाँ 2005 में तो पूरी सुनामी हो गई थी और अभी 2017, 18, 19, 20 खाली ये 22 की साल में पानी नहीं आया है तो तुम्हें क्या जाओ पानी आवे तो नहीं मत बिल्डिंग बाहर निकली जाइए हमें दरवाजा पर सामान फटाफट ऊपर चढ़ा भी दिए घर लोग करीने जहाँ हमने जगह में लेते हैं ओढ़की तो होए तो ओढ़की तो नहीं तो बच्ची रोड पर के बच्ची बिल्डिंग ना गेट पास से हमारे वेट करो पड़े पानी उतरे त्याग सुबह मशीन मशीन है सब मालिये पे लगा देता है उसके बाद एक महीने तक काम धंधा नहीं होता है कुछ रोजी रोटी का कोई नहीं और किसी का समर लोग कर्जा अपुन लेते हजार दो हजार वो देना बाद में मुश्किल हो जाता है पानी जब आता है तब नुकसान होते रहते हैं कहाँ गिनती करने बैठे कभी बीस का हुआ कभी पच्चीस का हुआ एक बार पच्चीस जुलाई को आया तो पचास के ऊपर गया एटी वन के बाद बाढ़ आना शुरू हो गया बाढ़ यानी एक्चुअल क्या है कि ऊपर से जो पानी आता है बारिश का हाई टाइड के वजह से रुक जाता है और उसको जाने को जगह नहीं इसके लिए वो वॉल के ऊपर से जाता था वो स्ट्रॉन्ग वाटर ड्रेन में हाई टाइड के वजह से उनको ड्रेन होने को नहीं मिलता है पानी और वहाँ से दबाव आता है पानी का फिर वो जो ढकना रहता है और ढक्कन चैम्बर के ढकने में से पानी बाहर आता है जब बहुत बारिश होती है आपका यहाँ अनुभव क्या होता है हम लोग का अनुभव यहाँ पे बहुत बुरा होता है क्योंकि जब भी यहाँ पे पानी भरता है अभी तो ये गंदगी खड़े रह के हम लोग सिर्फ सूंघ रहे है ना लेकिन उस टाइम पे ये पूरी गंदगी हमारे घर पे होती है सबका बाथरूम का लाइन यहीं पे है क्योंकि इसका रास्ता नहीं है तो फिर जब नदी ओवरफुल हो जाती है तब क्या होता है पानी तो पानी पूरा रिटर्न आता है और सबके घर में एक घर नहीं बसता है उस टाइम पे लोग ना सिर्फ अपना जान बचाते पिछले साल दो बजे हम लोग को पानी आया ये उठा वो उठाने तक पानी फुल भर गए 
भर गए तो पानी मशीन पलटी हुआ ये वाला मशीन पलटी हुआ तो फिर आपको और जो है ना उधर चूज है ना शायद वो चालू था पूरा शॉर्ट सर्किट पानी में आ रहा था अंधेरे में हम लोग निकल के गए इतने इतना पानी था हमने बेड के नीचे पत्थर रखा है तो वो हम इलेक्ट्रिक के चीजें जो है हम उसके नीचे भी पत्थर रखते ताकि पानी ना भरे उसमें और कुछ नहीं नाउ द क्वेश्चन वाई डज द रिवर फ्लड इट्स बैंक वन ऑफ द मेन कॉजेज ऑफ फ्लडिंग ऑफ दहीसर रिवर इज इज मेनली द एक्सट्रीम रेनफॉल दैट इट रिसीव्स इट ओरिजिनेट्स फ्रॉम द संजय गांधी नेशनल पार्क एंड इट इज अराउंड द लेक्स एंड इट इज एट एन अल्टीट्यूड वेयर एनी वे द हाई रेनफॉल इवेंट्स जियो फिजिकली द क्लाइमेट ऑल्सो सपोर्ट्स लेंथ ऑफ द रिवर एज कम्पेयर टू द अल्टीट्यूड दैट इट क्रॉसेज इज वेरी लेस सो इट कम्स अप विद अ ह्यूज फोर्स वेन इट गेट्स Uh, flooded what has happened uh, because of global warming or because of lot of environmental changes uh, uh though our mean rainfall has kind of stable with a little bit of variations but what has happened that extreme rainfalls are, have increased so whatever water falls in terms of extreme that just goes away as flash flood and things will things are more severe in mumbai because it's of entirely concrete and also it is a hilly region so hilly region means orographic regions are prone to more extreme events when the flood water has to go it has to go to the ocean or sea arabian sea i mean so it is like this and the water is coming from mumbai city and it is reaching here now what is happening because of sea level rise sea level is slowly rising and at the same time let's say your storm surge are increasing so this level is higher now water cannot go away so what is happening it results into more water logging like the city of mumbai is uh, uh, it's on the coast of arabian sea which is rapidly changing but arabian sea the temperatures used to be historically below 28 or 27 or even 26 degrees celsius now during the last several decades these temperatures have gone up rapidly leading to a multitude of extreme weather events i think i think the major threat that mumbai sea is from flooding flooding in multiple ways and it can be it can be from extreme rainfall events it can be from cyclones bringing bringing in lot of rains and it can be the same cyclones pushing a lot of water as storm surge cyclones cause uh, huge waves So there is one more threat that is happening along the coast of Mumbai that is increasing sea level. There are possibilities that many of these events could occur together. So we call them combined event. Combined event uh, has been recently coined uh, and used uh, in the IPCC their six assessment report. But in that report they say that it is something that might happen in the future in the near future. but for cities like mumbai we see that this is already happening yeah apart from extreme rainfall cyclones storms storm surges and sea level rise factors related to urbanization have also contributed to the flooding if you see mumbai originally uh, maybe uh, 150 200 years back is all seven islands so it's all reclaimed uh, so and the the amount of concretization happening See the number of buildings constructed, the roads getting concretized, and the garden areas there are more concretization. That uh, creates uh, flooding because uh, one of the main measures for flood control is to absorb the water and contain it in the same location where there is lot of earth, free earth. So the water soaks, it seeps, it goes down in the same place into the earth. nowadays it is difficult so water water falls on the air it flows it doesn't go into the ground because of concretization the primary cause of the uh, the flooding is uh, there is some technicality over there but just i'll try to explain that if you look at uh, any um, uh, velocity of water or volume of water which the river carries it is based on the surface runoffs surface runoff has coefficients so there is a runoff coefficient so for the soil a pervious soil the runoff coefficient is about 0.5 0.6 which was earlier and a impervious surface like a hard concreteized surface is closer to 1 if you look at 100% of water going into the drain with a runoff coefficient of closer to 1 all of it going into the drain at the same time 
okay versus in the natural state it was half of, only half of the water was going to the drain the river width was one, one meter or less than that as well at certain you know instances which means the encroachment was never been controlled or no one was actually uh, you know uh, admitting the kind of encroachment that was happening along the edges of the river bithi at least has a flow that you talk about the hisa which is not a perennial one didn't have that and the flow which it gets today is only the sewage in the dry marsh in any catchment area in your house to your building to any uh, when you put a small chocolate wrapper or any plastic bag it will ultimately go to the storm water nearby you and from storm water ended to a big nala and big nala ended to a river so entire river is choked with a sewer with a plastic with a cow dung and with the chemicals the last 2 3 years i am seeing mumbai gets more than 200 mm events at least 3 days in the monsoon so and the 200 mm also if it happens within 3 4 hours then the flooding is bound to happen in one hour if you get 75 mm of rainfall the city will not flood if there is a low tide situation the same 75 mm of rainfall per hour if there is a high tide situation it will flood the storm water drainage uh, network has its outfalls at various locations across the cities and uh, out of you know almost 176 uh, if i'm not wrong around 45 of them uh, are are below the mean sea level so they tend to sort of not release the water into the sea and the ocean when it is required especially in cases when it's flooding or in high rainfall events the, the water tends to come inside the new area the western and eastern suburb which are not the old city area but the new areas we have huge uh, storm water drainage systems but that system mostly it was catering to only 25 mm per hour rainfall so those systems are not equipped to handle those kind of large rainfalls and shorter durations government is utilizing 700 crore specially bmc to clean this in the may but why they are not starting from october onwards it has to be cleaned throughout year in 2006 the madhav chitle committee set up by the maharashtra government to investigate the 2005 mumbai deluge recommended training the city's rivers on both banks to quote avoid their bank spills end quote however the concrete walls built by the mumbai municipality elicited mixed responses the water is coming from up upstream but the water which is falling on the in the local areas which wants to enter into the river it is not allowed to get in so that the wall also becomes a barricade and it prevents the water from getting in you know around the world we see concrete walls are never a solution retaining walls so they only push the water uh, downstream right so they can prevent flooding in one part of where where the retaining wall is built but the water will find its way right and some other area gets flooded the wall retaining wall is scientifically speaking it is not a great idea but bmc is adapting this approach for several reasons the main reason is people inhabited very dangerously close to the rivers not only close to the river if the same the sir if you go there are some islands formed in between people live there because of this geographical uh, limitations as well as the the settlements the type of settlements they are so you need this concrete walls to come up so that is the only way to contain the river water from flowing into the settlements apart from the retaining wall the mumbai municipality or bmc has adopted flood mitigation measures such as installing pumps to push water to the sea building underground water holding tanks and micro tunneling under the train tracks Alongside this the Indian Meteorological Department has been working to strengthen early warning systems. In a bid to aid the mitigation activities of the flood prone city, the Ministry of Earth Sciences along with Municipal Corporation of Greater Mumbai decided to develop an integrated flood warning system for Mumbai referred to as iFlows Mumbai. The system will use forecasted rainfall from the numerical weather models and flood inundation will be estimated for mumbai 3 days in advance 
The operational system will be handed over to MCGM and it will be maintained with support of IMD Mumbai. So let's say if you ask that, you know, what is the flood level in Mumbai at different locations? Nobody knows it. And I was talking to one of the IMD officials and asking him that, you know, the iFlows, how do you validate? They said that we haven't validated. So if you can start, you know, monitoring it or doing something that will be really useful for validation. So with some of these technologies, uh, we are actually able to come up with better warning systems. They're not disseminated um, uh, to uh, different communities and actors, including disaster management cell and municipal wards and so on. And even if they are done, there is either a failure to understand these warnings or the failure to act upon them. In fact, municipal officials told the media in 2021 that the iFlow software needed to provide more local and actionable information. In terms of what the government is doing after a disaster happens, we, we again see that uh, it's mostly in terms of making sure uh, that the water which is uh, stagnating in certain areas is removed. It's in isolated pockets that you see the police or there's a disaster management force or different rescue forces trying to rescue people. Otherwise, it's mostly self-help by the communities and that's what we see in the ISAR also. In 2021, my friend Sanjay Jain, who we had so much help here, we had to ठीक आए थे यहाँ पर लीडर लोग आए थे उन्होंने सिंपेटी हमको दी थी अच्छा हो गया लेकिन सब काम हमको अपने आप में करना पड़ा हमारा 2005 ला जेवड़ी मदे मदे फेसले मानसिक पास है रुपए जेवड़े कारण 2017 मदे जाने तो क्या मदे काम मदद था 2020 ला जाने तो क्या मदे कौन काम मदद था सीतावनी बीतावनी ऐसी कुछ नहीं मिलती थ उसके वजह से नुकसान होने वाला है तो अपन अपना खुद को संभाल ले। The the flood mitigation just does not involve in in the early warning systems and then the kind of services that you provide. So you have flood shelters which are being built by uh, the Mumbai uh, administration. If you go through the action plan, you'll see that we have tried to map access to these flood shelters. So we have to you know sort of move from the disaster reaction to more of disaster preparedness. What we also see is that sometimes resilience of communities can be misused. So we say, for example, you know, Mumbai has a spirit of resilience, right? So that's because they have no option, right? You have to go to work next day to earn your living, to fill your stomach. Then what kind of solutions does the city need to increase its resilience to climate extremes? All coastal communities are at different kinds of risk, even those who are well off. That's why, you know, in New York and California, they are already thinking of what is called as managed retreat. That everybody, all activities, all land use, built environment will be moved further inland. And Mumbai is, you can't go inland, <laughs> you can only go <laughs> towards the mainland. So that's a huge uh, risk for us. The resettlement of these flood affected riverside communities could be a possible long term solution. We uh, did a study in 2014 15 on some of the resettlement that happened. The number of households that were resettled was about 5,000. Whereas our estimates showed that just along the Miti River alone, there are at least 30,000 houses that are going to be affected, that are affected by flooding. As per the recommendations of the Madhav Chitale Committee report, the BMC is responsible for widening the city's rivers and resettling people living in flood risk zones near their banks. Even if a BMC is ready to spend, that kind of housing is not immediately available. So now we are going for PAP, the project affected persons. So we are creating close to 13,000 PAP tenements. So, but those tenements will come in another three to four years time. So, so collectively, we spend a lot to make the city uh, suffer less from the flooding. But never we can promise a flood-free city. Most people we spoke to said they wanted the BMC to help them make their homes, shops, and buildings flood-proof and rebuild these structures in the same location. Any region se hum logo ne apna investment yahan kiya inventory hamari lag gayi. Isme government humko kahin pe dusre ke pe shift karna chahiye aur fir yahan develop karke humko wapas dena chahiye. Aage ke building sab redeveloper ho rahi hai aisa nahi nahi ho raha. Jaise aage wale de developer utne ne 8 feet upar utaya to bhi unki dukaan mein pani bharta hai. Do 3 foot unke hi dukaan mein aa jata hai pani. 
तैयारी है जैसे अभी यहाँ के दौलत नगर में रीच लोग है जो बिल्डिंग एरिया है उन्होंने कर लिया है जो उनका घर नीचे था दो दो माले का था उन्होंने बिल्डर को देखे उसको रीडेवलपमेंट कर लिया है लेकिन स्लम वाले क्या तैयारी करेंगे मैडम माफी का घर है तो पानी घुसना तिकड़ून तिकड़ून चार बाजू में पानी आना घर मध्य पानी घुसना जर अस पक्का दिवाल बना तो नहीं घुसना पानी पक्का दिवाल बनवाला फॉरेस्ट वाल परमिशन दिल पाजे फॉरेस्ट वाली परमिशन देते मैडम हमारा विचार ऐसा है अगर यहाँ पे हमको मिले बिल्डिंग बनावे तो वही अच्छा रहा क्योंकि हमारा रोजी रोटी सब इधर ही है इस बाल बच्चे की स्कूल है सवी जुलाई वोकर मोटे मोटे The BMC says redevelopment in situ is not possible. Though it attempts to relocate people in the same municipal ward or an adjacent one, what will their lives be like in this new place? Resettlement does not mean only giving them a home in a safe place. So it it also re re relates to uh, other kinds of life and living opportunities for them in the, in the resettled location. If the resettlement is done properly, people are willing to move out because they are all too aware of the risks from flooding. There is sometimes skepticism around resettlement, and some people remain unconvinced that the municipality will step up for them. तो आप लोग एक दिन आइए बारिश में आइए ये नजारा देखने के लिए तो आप लोग को मालूम पड़ेगा वो जो जाली है ना वहाँ पे जो भी कचरा फंसा हुआ है जब वो हम निकालते हैं तब जाके यहाँ का पानी जाता है ये काम गवर्नमेंट का काम हम करते हैं सिचुएशन इट्स क्लियर दैट वेट फॉर हाउसिंग फ्लडिंग इज अ लॉन्ग वन बट इन एन एरिया ऑफ क्लाइमेट एक्सट्रीम्स The monsoon is likely to become more and more ferocious with every passing year.